What is up, everybody? And welcome back to Zachary Reality. It is Zachary Reality. And we are here with a very special guest today, Greer Blitzer from Zach Shawcross's season of The Bachelor and Bachelor in Paradise. Greer, how are you doing today? I'm doing amazing. It's flooding in New York City and uh, Dobby's cooking is burning the apartment down. So things are great. Why is it raining? Like how hard? <laughs> so hard. Really? I, yeah, so hard. The sub it was a flood morning. The subways were flooded. I had to spend fifty dollars to get home today. So Oh my gosh. So Oh my gosh. Well, yeah. I'm so sorry. I can't relate. I am in sunny California. So <laughs> not my problem. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I feel so bad, but welcome to my podcast. I am going to put you in the hot seat a little bit. I'm so okay. excited to get to know you a little bit more and just hear about your journey on the show. How are you doing like recently? Like what has been new? Like what are you doing for work? I'm wearing so many hats right now. Like when I first went on Zach season, I was in medical device sales mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't know I was going to be on Zach season. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to be on Zach season for as long as I was. I thought I was going to be back like the next Monday. So I kind of came back and they were like, yeah, you don't have a job here anymore. And I was like, okay, that's fair. And uh, I've just been doing so many different things now. I started doing freelance marketing and now I'm styling menswear in the city, which is pretty fun. And are you loving it? And how is how is living with your roommate? I'm loving it, honestly. Like I've been in New York for four years now and this is my favorite year. Like I love the creative release and also my roommate Davia mm -hmm. is amazing. I uh, I love I love living with her. So before Davia moved in, did you live alone? I did. Yeah, I lived by myself in a studio for two years. That's kind of how New York is. It's like you really have to pay a lot for like the smallest place, but it sounds like the most exciting city in the world. So I'm glad yeah. that you're loving life. New York is home. Every time I leave New York, I just can't wait to get back. So let's talk about your journey on The Bachelor. I felt like you were a huge personality on the show. You were so much fun to watch and you ended up disappearing um, when you left in that country and we never got a proper goodbye. So I'm really excited to get into it with you and really see how this all transpired. First, I have yeah. to ask how you ended up getting on the show to begin with. Oh, yeah. So I everyone's been nominated from someone and I'm just going to confess that I nominated myself. <laughs> yeah. I uh I don't know. I was just I was just bored one day, saw some girl applied on TikTok and I was like, huh, I'm gonna do it. I've got nothing else to lose. And so I did. And then they reached out to me like a week later and I thought it was spam. I didn't think it was real. So there is like a casting notice going on right now for like the next year. So how mm -hmm. like early did you apply and hear back from when you started filming? Honestly, I I applied in May, but like the process is so different to everyone. There's people you hear like they applied a week and then like started filming a week later. So everyone's different. Yeah. I'm, 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 I feel like I want to give some of the girlies advice who are really trying to get on for next yeah. season because I feel like The Bachelor was in a little bit of a flop era, but Joey's season was so good. So I know like a lot of girls are going to want to get on. What is your advice? Yeah. Like how do they do it? Uh, honestly... I would, my best advice is to definitely apply and then try to 100% tap into yourself, like be 100%, 110%, 150%, 200 version of you. Uh, mm -hmm. I was lucky that I had a friend of mine who uh, was on Bravo and they gave me advice. They said to me, just be you, you're a big personality and just don't shy away from it. And that's what I did. I leaned into it. I actually, my submission video that I sent in was uh i did a 72 questions vogue style in mm -hmm. the hamptons i do not live in the hamptons it's not it's not my life at all but it was very over the top and it caught their eye oh i love that i know who you're talking about because nima from shots of sunset he commented on one of my TikToks defending mm -hmm. you when you went through your whole scandal era and yeah. he like had your back and i'm like oh my god nima loves greer and then i like like just yeah. was like yeah he was one of my really good friends yeah we're really close I love that. So I don't know if you know, but your three facts, it, they maybe they did this for you. Maybe you did this, but I want to know if they're still true. The first one says Greer loves to shop at flea markets. True or false? Uh, that is so true. There's so many. I, I, I love thrifting things. Like actually, even my chandelier in my apartment is flea. It was like $4. So Greer says she is never embarrassed. True or not true? That is not true. I... <laughs> 
at at all. Oh my god, no. I'm too aware to not get embarrassed. Yeah. I mean, we all get embarrassed sometimes. Embarrassing yeah. feeling embarrassed is like the worst feeling. Yeah. Would you agree? Definitely. And like frustrated, at least for me. Yeah, I mean, like it's more of like a it's like I don't feel embarrassed right when it happens. As you think about it later, it's kind of like the Sunday scaries where you replay what you did and you're like, oh, ooh, yeah. that hurts. Yeah. Why'd I do that? We all have that. Okay, the last yeah. one. Greer can tell a lot about someone by their sushi order. Is this true? This is true. Can you explain? Yes. Uh, so I'm a I'm a big sushi fanatic, and I a lot of dates I had in the city I could like tell who like a guy was if he was adventurous, if he was like spontaneous, a little impulsive, or if he played things safe by his sushi order. Okay, so are you still going on sushi dates? Uh, absolutely, yeah. Okay, love it. Um, <laughs> let's get back to Zach. So, did you know he was going to be the Bachelor before you signed on? Like, were you hoping it was him? Like, what was your thought process? Yeah, I was hoping it was him. Um, I, I mean, I really didn't know while I was applying. Uh, but I mean, he's six foot five. I was like, yeah, sure, I'll definitely meet him. He's really cute. Yeah. Um, what, what was your thoughts on him kind of getting the boring bachelor edit vibe? You know, a lot of people were like, Zach, like, did you, did you guys feel like that? Or were you all like super into him in the house? I, I don't think he was, I don't think he was boring at all. I think that everyone knows that we don't always get every clip of behind the scenes showing everyone's personality. And at the same time, he's dating so many women and he's on television and there's so much attention onto him. You have to be kind of careful in a lot of situations. So I didn't think he was boring. Okay. So you were like kind of into it. So yeah. you showed up with a coffee order. I did. Yeah. Explain. Yeah. So I love Chris Olson and uh, I loved his uh, coffee oh, bits. He, he was did. doing it back then. Cause this was like a yes. year ago when you were on the show. Yes. So he's doing it back then. And I'm such mm. a fan of him. Like I, he's always on my FYP. I love his bits. And I wanted to do something that people could relate to. And when they're watching it, just think about, you know, the generation that we're in right now. Like, oh my God, I've seen Chris Olsen's TikToks. And it was actually pretty cool because he watched the show as well and noticed it, which was amazing. I feel like this is coming back to me. Did he, he must've made a TikTok about this. He did, yeah. I tried to reach out to him. I was like, hey, can I bring you coffee? And he just never <laughs> responded. But um, I will say I have met him a few times and he's really nice and cool. Yeah, I would uh, I would love to meet him one day. He's really talented. So basically, for people who don't know, he has like a coffee series where he travels literally all around the world and delivers coffee to celebrities. How he's able to pull it off, I don't know. It feels like so much work for one TikTok to fly across the world, but it works for him. So kudos to you. Um, Thank you. Making this. And it got Zach's um, impression because you made it past the first night. Um, did you get the first impression, Rose? Yes. Yes, I did, Zach. <laughs> Wait, I can't believe that you did. Why did you get it? Um, I honestly don't know. Uh, I was, I was like, by the time I spoke to him, it was so late. And in my mind, I was like, okay, like, if I'm going to go home tonight, I'm going all in. And I made him laugh a couple times. I felt, I felt really comfortable. I felt like I was on an actual first date with someone, mm. which was great. And kind of forgot that he was the lead. And I feel like maybe he also forgot that we were on the show when we spoke. Yeah. So it was uh, it was a moment of escape from all of the craziness that was happening. So that's how you get the first impression, Rose, people. You just forget <laughs> everything is there and just like be yourself. And did you feel like it created a target on you, you know, from the get go? Or was I, it just kind of like too early? I mean, I, I feel like if anyone in that situation can feel that way, I, I really just didn't want any girl to feel like I thought that I was uh, superior to anyone in the room. Yeah. I, I never wanted, I felt like we were all there just because I got the first impression room. Like there's girls that he didn't really even get to speak to. It doesn't mean that like I'm better or anything like that. So I tried to just not talk about it as much at all and just like act like it's cool and then move on from there and grow the connection. Yeah, cause it definitely could, I'm sure it could get like that. Whenever you get a rose, it's so validating. It's also like a trophy, yeah. it's like a medal. You got first place for this day. You're just like the best girl of the day. Yeah, so It's probably hard to like feel like you're competing with the other women, you know, while also trying to be friends. What, what was the hardest yeah. part about competing with the other women in that sense? I think the hardest part is that 
we build such a strong connection with everyone. We spend so much time with them and we care about their feelings. And we, it's like, we want to be selfish and we want to put ourselves first because we came here for love. We came here for this like opportunity to connect with the lead and see if there's a potential for marriage, for an engagement. But at the same time, like you have respect for these people and it's very different. It's not like we're competing with a roster back in, in the city. This is, it's the rosters in front of you and you know all of them and they're amazing. Yeah. Who did you become closest with from the show? Uh, so obviously Davia, who's my roommate, became really tight with her. Uh, I'm really, really close with Stoss, uh, Anastasia mm. and uh, Ali as well. And Charity. Charity was like my therapist on the show. She was amazing. Oh, so you're probably really happy that she ended up becoming the Bachelorette, Dancing with the Stars, everything. <gasps> oh my God. Yeah. I've been her number one fan since I met her. She was, uh, I walked out of the elevator, I saw her and I almost fell down on my knees. She looked so beautiful. Yeah. That's probably so cool because like there's 25 girls, obviously like, you know, a few that go to the end are going to be more popular, famous yeah. or continue at TV than others. So it's nice to know that like a lot of people really were rooting for charity and that she deserved like all the success that she got. She does. She does. I, she's, she's incredible and she deserved everything she's received. She's an amazing person. I love it. Okay. My number one question, I'm not even going to like make the viewers wait any longer. Did you have COVID? Why did you leave when like you, <laughs> why did you leave and it wasn't on the episode? I mean, I was told I had COVID. Mystery? I guess I had COVID. I didn't have any symptoms. Um, I don't really know what happened, but I was quarantined in Estonia for about like seven days. And then uh, I, just, I, I had no contact with anyone. The only time I had any communication was about my lunch and breakfast order. And then the TV was in a different language. So oh the God. highlight of my week was watching Noah's Ark on television. Um, and I was exhausted. And then they flew me out to Budapest. And so like by the time I saw Zach, I was just so tired and I didn't have a voice anymore. I think I like, I was just so drained. Yeah, your season was interesting because it was the season right after COVID. So even Zach got COVID during the season at one point and he had to do the Zoom rose ceremony. Remember when he yeah. sent home Kylie and Mercedes? Yeah. Like that was just such a crazy season, like with, with everything yeah. that happened in that regards. Was... So you, you ended up going towards week seven. So you were able to travel to a few different countries. And, mm -hmm. you know, how did you ever get a one-on-one? -on -one? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I flew to Budapest. I thought I was getting my one on one. I never got I never got a date. So I thought that uh whenever I was sick for that week and it was like the week before hometowns, I thought that was gonna be the moment that we were gonna have the one on one because I'm someone where like I have to see something all the way through. Mm -hmm. I can't just like I didn't want to self sabotage. I didn't want to think what if. I just was like, let me just wear my heart completely on my sleeve put myself out there fully and see what happens. So when I went in that room to see him, I thought that we were getting ready for a one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. what happened? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you remind everybody? What, what I like, did? Yeah. Like in the mo of me being broken up with in Budapest yeah. at yeah, like, was nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah, like, did you feel like, did you, do you feel like, did you feel like you got the opportunity that you, wanted or deserved or were or was no I definitely don't think that I had the time but at the same time like it wasn't in my control it wasn't in Zach's control it wasn't in any of our control we were both robbed of time and at the end of the day like I'm a, I just think that it just wasn't meant to be because if it was there would have been that time and we got along really really well in the beginning it was so fun and then all these external things happen other connections build and then I, he was sick for a week during COVID when he had COVID. And then I was out for that week and mm -hmm. two weeks in bachelor world is like six months of a relationship in the real world. This was a whole mess and it just didn't yeah. end up working out, but no. I'm sure that you're just like, I'm sure you can take away like the great moments from the experience. And like, you know, that you weren't going to end up with Zach anyway. So you can yeah. kind of laugh at it now. Right. Oh, definitely. I was so delusional. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like I that's how I got through that whole process. Like I was like, none of this is normal. Maybe if I just think everything's gonna be fine. And it's like it's like how can you trust your your gut and intuition when it's not normal? It's not a normal situation. So how you'd handle that is so different than how you'd handle in the real world. For sure. Can can you remind everyone which countries and cities you went to and then like which one was your favorite? 
Yeah, yeah. So I went to Bahamas. I went to London. Then I went to Estonia. And I went to Budapest. Okay. Which one yeah. was your favorite? You know, it's hilarious is that I didn't even get to like <laughs> hang out with him in Budapest. But I stayed an extra day and it was so fun. I went to a bathhouse. I went to like mm -hmm. dinner by the water. And I've dreamed about going to Budapest. I think the one thing I wish I could have done there was go to a bath rave or something. But so what, after you were like sent home, you like extended your flight an extra day or you just kind of like. Yeah, I like did retail therapy. I like did a lot of damage. And then. Like, in the middle of Budapest exploring. Aimless. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, if I'm going out, I'm going to go out like feeling OK. And the beauty of it all, too, is Halloween is like my favorite holiday. So that's kind of when I went home and I went straight to New York and went to a Halloween party. So I love it. It was a sweet ending. Back to life, <laughs> back to reality. Um, yeah. How the season ended up playing out. Were you happy or with um, Zach picking Katie and were you surprised that he picked her? I'm so happy they're together. Katie is one of the sweetest, kindest people I've ever met. And they work so well together. I'm so happy for them. Yeah. And they're still going strong. And they yeah. feel like normal vibing like they are living together yeah. in Austin and they're all still um Katie's still really close friends with like Ariel and Gabby and we've kind of seen I don't know if you watched Joey's season but we kind of see how mm -hmm. like the finale the women are really like supporting each other and almost like bowing out at the end because it's so obvious and like it kind of yeah. started on Zach's season with the whole Gabby thing like she really set the tone for what Daisy was able to do this year what is your yeah. take on, on all that Daisy walked so that, I mean, sorry, Gabby walked so that Daisy could run 100%. Yeah. Because uh, the way that Daisy left the situation was absolutely iconic. I couldn't, if I were, I, the, the strength that she has, I can't even imagine. Like she had, she had the strength to wish him well, wish Kelsey well, and also prioritize herself all in one moment. I've never seen something like that done before. That's something you see in movies. Like I, I was so impressed by her. No, somebody asked me the, the other day, they're like, what was your take on that, the ending? And I was just like, it was masterful, like television. I feel like yeah. the producers did a good job. I just felt like her going over to talk to Kelsey, having that conversation and then riding yeah. in the limo together was so good. But it really did stem from Zach's season because I really admired what Gabby did too. when she was yeah. just like, you know, this is so obvious. Um, but how is The Bachelor supposed to lead girls on like and everyone's just supposed to be OK with it? Did you feel like that on the show ever? I mean, I I was in good graces with Zach, so I really didn't experience that probably till the week that he had COVID, which when he was frustrated and when you're in those, like I guess, a relationship, you feel your partner's frustration. So I never got to feel that from him. I mean, other girls probably did. I just personally like didn't have that experience. Yeah. But um, I don't know. I feel like it's hard. Like you're not going to connect with there's 30 women. Like you're not going to connect with everyone. And if you're genuine, you're a real person, not a robot. You're not going to be able to fake it with everyone that's there. For sure. Is there anything I didn't touch on in regards to your exit? Um, that like like did you care that it wasn't shown on the TV? Like in the way it was supposed to? Like is there anything else you want to like mention about it? Probably like my whisper cry that I had at the end. I, I wanna I wanna let it be known that I lost my voice. So <laughs> I don't whisper and cry often. Okay. I'm just exhausted. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Um switching gears to the women to all just for like a sec. Like you um yeah. definitely had a lot of things to address based on what was said about your past and you know online and tweets from you know high school and you really took the high road and you know held your head strong and I was just kind of wondering like what was that moment for you and you know what were you able to kind of clear up that you wanted to yeah so not many people know but that was my decision to do that um and I kind of just like I knew that it was coming but not it wasn't really planned but I knew I wanted to say something because I, I'd been wanting to talk about it uh, since before even it everything aired pretty much. Yeah. But obviously due, due to circumstance, I didn't have that opportunity. So I saw this as a chance to, I wanted this moment, not for myself, but to help maybe someone else out there or others who need that moment. And uh, I know I probably didn't say everything perfectly. I don't even know how I could even say anything 
perfectly in that situation, but I meant every word and I don't, I don't take any of it back and I'm, I'm happy I did it. I love that. And I feel like everybody like had your back and understood, and I'm glad you had the platform to explain yourself because, you know, times like this on the show could be really tough online and, you know, everybody makes mistakes and everyone can learn from them. So I'm glad you had that opportunity. Um, so did you hesitate when they called you to go to Bachelor in Paradise or were you like, what can get worse? Let's do it again. I was like, yeah, I still want to find love. Put me on the beach. Give me give me a man, a pina colada and some sun. I'm there. OK, <laughs> so you were down. So how um, yeah. long, how, how much of a heads up did you get? Uh, like a month. OK. Yeah. And did you have any guys that you wanted to see there? Yeah, Joey. <laughs> From charity season? Yeah, I want. I that's who I wanted to see whenever I was uh, going on the beach. But but he was like, going to be the bachelor. But I didn't know at the time. Yeah, no one mm -hmm. knew. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. But honestly, yeah, no one. I mean, we don't. We don't know. So uh, I I was really excited to meet him, and then there was a few other people. I actually really wanted to meet Johnny. I wasn't sure if Johnny was going to make a comeback after Paradise. And I thought that I liked that he was a chef. I liked yeah. that he cooked. And he seemed like he had really good energy. So yeah. I had a few people on my list that I was like, mm, maybe they're there. But none of no one on my list was actually there. Yeah. Okay. And if you guys don't remember, Johnny dated Victoria. And then she left him. And, you know, there was a whole breakup. And then now she's dating Greg. And then we don't know what's going on with that anymore. Um, but I wanted him to come back, too, and get another season. And I hope that they do some type of all-star season and get more people back in a different way because have you heard of paradise might not come back this year i haven't heard anything about it so maybe not I don't okay know. would you go back or are you in a relationship now i'm not <laughs> oh i'm sorry i'm not but it's okay <laughs> i've decided that um i want stuff like that to be very private too many cooks for in the kitchen for sure. Fair enough. Okay. Mm -hmm. Love it. So on Paradise, um, you ended up going home at the first rose ceremony. So what happened there? Um, I think that I friend zoned everyone and didn't realize that I was because <laughs> I just had no romantic connection. I didn't kiss anyone. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't. I, I just told myself I'm going to make out with someone, someone I'm going to be really into. And I just never had that. And I just became friends with everyone. And I was just like, so like not heartbroken just like disappointed in the end because i actually really believe in the process like it actually works for people and i really wanted it for myself and it's just so frustrating when you want something so bad and it's just not meant for you at that time yeah so it was just like a hard like like pill to swallow realization but the beach wasn't for me there wasn't yeah. anyone there for me yeah well at least you gave it a go and you had great style i did love this outfit that you wore Thank on you. day one Thank you. I wanted you something have, spicy. Yeah. Do you have any like favorite outfits from the show? I know I've showed a bunch of pics. <laughs> <laughs> um, definitely would not choose my headshot dress. I I don't know why I wore that. Um, I wish I honestly wish I like like Maria's outfits this past season were iconic and I loved all of them and it made me wish I like went a more risque route with my outfits because I was trying to be a little more modest with my outfits. I wish I was like had the lady balls that she has and just said, this is me and this is what I want to wear with Paradise. So Paradise, I think were my favorite outfits. There's this one dress that it was on for maybe like 10 seconds. The millisecond I was actually on everyone's television screen. Um, if you didn't blink, you might've saw me. Uh, <laughs> but it was this like, it was at the, uh, it was like the fire, um, like the first two episodes. It was like this fire episode, like bonfire, like truths mm -hmm. with Hannah Brown. Mm -hmm. And I was wearing this multicolor, like mesh uh, dress that I got from my favorite designer, Kim Shuey. And mm -hmm. I felt like an absolute snack. I felt like I should be in, I felt like I, I should that. be roasted with the marshmallows and graham crackers. Honestly. I love it. <laughs> I love that so much. Um, I'm glad that you watched Joey's season as well, because um, people are going to want to know a couple of your quick takes on the season. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You mentioned Maria. Did you have a favorite girl that you loved the most this past season? I met Maria before the season started, and she is one of the coolest, baddest bitches mm -hmm. I know. She's really awesome. We, like, grabbed a drink here in New York City, and uh, she's just really real. 
what you see is what you get. So what you saw on screen, like that's Maria. And I just had like a lot of respect for her. She was, she's been my favorite before the show. She's my favorite after the show. Yeah. I, I would ride for Maria. Yeah. Me too. I love Maria. She's so good. Um, what were your thoughts on Joey and Kelsey um, ending up together? I thought they were so cute. They, yeah. they were so cute. You saw, everyone saw that chemistry. Mm-hmm. And I, I was watching it. I like saw like my feet kind of like start to move a little bit like up in the air. Cause I was like, Oh, this is so cute. It was definitely, they seemed like a rom-com couple for sure. Yeah. I'm really happy for them. So I hope that they can make it work and I hope they post a lot. Cause I live following them. Um, what are your thoughts on Jen Tran becoming the bachelorette? Yeah. I mean, she's absolutely stunning. She went on that date with Joey. Obviously like I, I don't really know too much about Jen, just a mm-hmm. few like a bit of screen time that she had. But I'm excited for her. Like Charity said, she's great. She's got to be. So I'm excited for her to dominate her season. For sure. I love that moment when Charity passed the baton. (laughs) She did. Yeah. Yeah. It was a good moment. I love that. Well, thank you so much for coming on and chatting with me. I'm glad that we got to talk about your season and get your Mm -hmm. takes. Um, What is, you know, something you want everyone to know before I let you go and tell, um, Tell us where we could follow you on social. I I can't think of anything at the very moment on top of my head, Zach. But if you guys want to keep up with me and see what I'm up to, uh, my Instagram is Cheerio underscore Greerio. I love it. Stay tuned. <laughs> I will leave it in the description below. Everyone go follow Greer. Thank you so much for coming on. And thank you all so much for listening and watching. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you're listening as a podcast, rate and review. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye.